Hey guys. Can you really say you're surprised? So Velma, uh, release I believe yesterday. It's uh, about ten episodes, all for you to watch right now on HBO Max. So <laughs> the average audience score is a fourteen percent. Not in the, the, the 70s or 80s or even most likely like the 90s that they were thinking in their minds. No, it is a crappy score like we thought it would be. And and of course, everyone on Twitter is already calling it saying, you better watch out. Mindy Kaling is going to come on and start calling everyone a racist and this and that saying that they're the reason the show's failing and blah, blah, blah. Um, I think... Uh, well, it's just, one of the one of the users uh, has like a bingo card that he uses when things like this happen. You know, you can put all the time. You know, oh, it's this excuse. It's this. It's really fun. It's and it just shows that the fact that he has a bingo card that you can use, and every single one of those you'll see and hear at least once just shows how often these people use these kinds of excuses oh it's not for the fans oh you're just racist oh you hate women of color oh the, it, it's the typical bull crap rather than taking responsibility for taking a franchise that people love and screwing it up by forcing the diversity and all that other bs no let's just blame the people who are criticizing it so 14 percent 14%. The origin of the sleuth and member of the Mystery Inc. gang, Velma. As I said, it was yesterday. As I said in the video, this show, it's... The, the, the characters are not the characters. They were basically people in that world who decided to dress up like these characters that we know. Um, There's nothing... Uh, charming about any of them. There's nothing that connects you to any of them. People who have reviewed so far have said like the the meta humor. It's just way too much. They go too out. They're too much out of their way to do that crap. Um, it's really not that funny or creative. It's basically like that show Big Mouth. It, it it's not that great of a show. The you know some of the scenes can look nice. But for the most part, it's the crappy, simplistic-looking art style that we pretty much see in everything now. Um, so, you know, but 20... I would have expected 20% or 30%. Honestly, those were that was my highest. At my lowest, I thought it was going to be like 8. So I'm a little off. You know, a little off from eight. You know, we are in the double digits here. But 14, and the average is about 60%. And yet, they keep doing the same crap over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Thinking you're gonna get they're gonna get different results. Sure, let's just make a freaking show that takes an established uh you know established lore, screw that up, screw with the, the, the characters for sake of diversity, make them completely different than what they really are, bash the fans along the way, and it's gonna be a number one hit. That seems to be the formula now. When it comes to marketing. Oh, it, it, diversity. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's great to see a, a Velma who's who looks like this and blah, blah, blah. And we're so used to seeing a white Velma. And... So it's the same marketing over and over and over. Um, again, when the, the, the trailer goes out of its way to bash fans. But then they, they say, well, we don't, you know, this is not for the fans then who is it for if you're not making it if you're taking a 
product, a, a series that people adore, that it's been around since the freaking 60s, and you're not making it for the fans, who are you making it for? Yourself with your stupid self-inserts because Velma? Mindy Kaling, that's a freaking self-insert right there. So if you're not making it for the fans, who are you making it for? You're wasting all this money, all this time, all this, all this time people sit, sitting there animating this, and you're not doing it for the fans? Then who is it for? All, all for a bunch of people who, who what, sit around an office like, oh yeah, oh self-insert, representation, diversity. I mean, is that what it's for? So to get your fucking, you know, I, I don't get why they, they, all these companies, why Hollywood comes out and always says it's not for the fans. Oh, Lord of the Ring nerds. Oh, it's not for you. It's not for the fans. Well, then who's it for? The Lord of the Rings community is very, you know, is very niche. You know, if you're not making it for the fans, who are you making it for? The average viewer is probably not going to sit there and watch something about Lord of the Rings. You know, you hear people all the time, oh, I tried to watch the first one, I couldn't get into it. So if you're not making for the fans, who are you making it for? But no, they just, every single time, they just come out and crap on the fans. Cowboy Bebop, same thing. Talking about uh, Faye and how it looked nothing like Faye, she acted like nothing like Faye, uh, the costume was crap, and what did she do? Yeah, she just comes out and bashes fans. So that's the, the, the formula now. You get criticism about your product, and rather than taking it to heart like, oh, I don't know, Sonic, remember what that was like? That's how you handle the situation. People came out and said, boy, that Sonic is ugly. Change it. And they were like, okay. And the next trailer comes out, and we have a brand new Sonic that looks like Sonic. And it was amazing. And the movie did well, because guess what? They didn't crap all over the fans. They didn't say, well, well this, this movie isn't for you. You know, I remember that they were very open. Like, they were, uh, obviously they were hurt by people being so mean about, you know, Sonic. But he was freaking hideous. He was freaking hideous. The, the realistic teeth and just everything about him just screamed, not Sonic. And then people said, hey, you need to change this. This needs to look more like Sonic. And then they changed it. And it looked good. And people went to see the movie. And it was good. And they didn't crap on the fans. They listened to criticism. And they changed it. Funny how when you don't crap on fans, your product tends to do better. But nope. Nope. Is it really too surprising? No, it's not. We all saw this coming. We all... <laughs> we knew this was going to happen. As soon as they announced it, we knew this was what it was going to be like. And we knew the excuses. We knew the, the, the deflections that they would use. Um... It's not for the fans. Uh, you just hate people of color in, in major roles. Uh, you just hate women. Uh, you just racist. Uh, this, this. Every typical what you'd expect. So I'm glad it failed. Now, the numbers could go up. They could go down. I don't know. But as of right now, we're looking at average audience score as 14%. If only Hollywood would just learn how to listen to people and take criticism. But here we are with yet another show. Yet another show where they bash the fans. They tell people it's not for them. If you don't like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. And we see the results. And... You know, like I said, they're they're going through all this trouble to make it, spending all this money, so they're only hurting themselves. 
you telling the people not to watch it okay there are many other amazing shows that we can watch we don't have to watch your crappy little show if we don't want to you need us more than we need you you need us to make back all that money you know it's like with the same like with movies you know where these big blockbuster movies spend like 600 million gajillion dollars for a movie but then they bash the fans and then worldwide it comes nowhere close to making back what it may uh used you know what they spent to make it because it's like hey said it's not for us so i didn't go see it my friends didn't go see it people across the world didn't go see it because you said not to so Anyway, <laughs> that's it for me. You guys know the drill. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.